Hi guys, how are you guys doing? It's been a while, it's me Andrew and I'm still alive. Yes, this podcast is very much still alive. Firstly, let me address the elephant in the room. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry for not uh, putting up a podcast in a very long time. It's going to be almost almost two years. Um, I think the last episode was in 2022, November. So technically it's been like a year and a half, really. But I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just trying to say that I haven't been the most disciplined individual. And um, I obviously apologize for that. But at the same time, I do want to say that I have started to get my stuff back together. And so um, part of that process is getting this podcast back up. And I had a great opportunity to do that with this uh, this amazing individual that we're going to have a conversation with in a bit. Uh, and actually something that I didn't get to share with you guys. Actually, uh, Sharkbit Entertainment's Masala Chai was rated 17th in self-improvement in Singapore. I found out this information ironically when I was just on uh, some website and it just showed up on one of the top rankings and I was I was quite surprised. I I was very, very shocked. I didn't I did not know this, but it, it just goes to show that in a country with such a culture with uh, podcasts, and I see a lot of people listening to podcasts like on their way to work in the morning, uh, you know, when they're just settling down at home. It's it's become a part of their lives. And uh, to to think that my podcast has been making some sort of a difference is is really really contentful, if that makes sense. I, I feel content, and I'm glad that people are responding to this the way they are. Uh, without further ado, let's begin into the third episode of Masala Chai, season two. Let's go. Thank you so much for being here. Bro, um, thank you for having me, bro. It's a it's a pleasure yeah. to be here. This is a long Thank time you. coming. Yeah, I actually, for a bit, I stopped uh, making these podcasts. I right. um, Mainly because I couldn't find any guests and the other because I'm just very undisciplined in that way. Uh, but <laughs> but I'm start, uh, starting to change that. No, no, and, that's uh, and, and yeah. And so guys, today we have Arjun Gupta. He's a uh, influencer, content creator, tennis player as well, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. play a lot of tennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do play tennis. We attended... Uh, the same high school we attended the uh, British school Jakarta. Love that school. And, uh, shout out BSJ. Yeah. Shout out BSJ. It's, it seems uh, a lot of my my friends, at least the connections that we have, at least in this podcast, has only been people from BSJ. Right, so right. So we can uh, hopefully see how that goes. Right. But uh, but yeah, I'm I'm, I'm glad we're here. And actually, yeah. this happened quite spontaneously, right? It did. It we, did. I mean, we were just talking, yeah. like you know, we text back and forth and. Uh, you know, I was I just jokingly said we got to talk about uh, I think we were discussing how every road you take in life has a purpose and everything yeah. in life happens for a reason. So I jokingly texted you like we got to discuss this on a podcast sometime. And then you're just like, why don't I bring the podcast back? So, so yeah, yeah. it was it was pretty spontaneous. But I, I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy that we're here now. Recording. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a good opportunity as well, uh, it is, because yeah. I think. I think you have one of those. Um, you're very really easy to talk to in the sense that oh, something you have on your mind, right, is is easy to to clear clearly get that out. You know, right, right. And uh, and you will see a lot of times the thing is nowadays, especially because um, when you when you're in this generation that we're in, yes, a lot of people at times they tend to judge based on uh, your age. This this idea of ageism. Yeah. Oh my God. Have you have you, have you felt that? Yeah, so I mean, you and I were Indians, so we can yeah, yeah. we can relate to that uh, in our culture at least that that concept of oh you're only this year this you're only this old you shouldn't be you shouldn't be talking about this or or oh, how how are you so so wise for your age? Oh you my know, God, that, 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 that I, I hear that all the time. Yeah. It's yeah, I I can relate to what you're saying. Yeah, and so I mean that's why uh, it's quite rare to see someone who's well articulated at that at that point uh in time so that's why i thought you know this is a great opportunity because yeah, thanks brother people watch and listen to podcasts because they can you know gain experiences and learn from other people's experiences yeah. and how how uh, how better to do that than to listen to people who can you know articulate themselves really well right and so yeah uh that's what we're pretty much doing today and again masala chai the idea of the podcast is to be a, it's a very natural very localized yeah. conversation really I love um, it. Yeah. How, how, do you actually have a podcast of your own? 
So I don't have a podcast yet, but uh, I'm thinking of launching one very soon. Uh, so as mm. as you know, I do create content on my YouTube channel. So I post long yeah. form videos and shorts. I'm definitely thinking of launching like an actual podcast. So I I've done a few videos on my channel where I just have conversations with like friends and interesting people. Yeah. Uh, it, um, launching a podcast of my own is definitely something in the works, and I love listening to podcasts. Um, yeah. You know Jay Shetty's podcast, Lewis House, yeah, yeah, uh, Chris Williamson's Modern Wisdom podcast. These are just some of my favorites. So uh, even uh, I don't know if you've uh, listened to uh, the Ren Beer Show by Beer Biceps. Mm, no, I haven't. It's uh, yeah. I mean, I'll have a look. It's mostly popular in India, though. Uh, I mean, his audience is ah uh, probably. So I, see. I know you're in Singapore, so, uh, but that's also one of my favorite podcasts. So I love podcasting. I love listening to podcasts. So that's definitely something that I'm gonna be bringing about uh, very, very soon. That's good. That's good because I see uh, a lot of the stuff that you upload and uh, yeah. the kind of things that you do is very important because I feel like that kind of motivational sense. You know, we don't get that nowadays. We're so uh, we're so blindsided by by social yeah. media and all that kind of nonsense that we right. see on a day to day basis. It's nice to get a reminder once in a while, you know. So seeing your content always makes me like, ah, yes, we get back to work, Adrian. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, Adrian, I'm I'm humble to hear that, bro. I mean, yeah. that's my intention, man. It's not to tell people what to do and what not to do. It's just to set the example and to remind people that they have greatness inside of them. Because I feel like mm. we all have greatness inside of us, but the problem is we've been conditioned all of our lives to believe that. We're just meant to, um, you know, go to school, get a job, work a nine to five, pay bills, and die. And yeah. I fundamentally believe that that is not the case. We all have gifts inside of us. We all have a special purpose that's been placed in our heart. But because mm. we live in a world where there's so much noise, Adrian, I feel like we're just not able to listen to our intuition because I feel like your intuition is God talking to you. Right, um, and that's why I'm a huge proponent of things like meditation, breath work, just sitting in solitude, maybe going on walks in nature without any music on. You just have to be still. Find those moments of stillness in your day, and that's when you can sort of listen to your intuition and get these downloads embedded into your subconscious mind. Yeah, so this is something that uh, I used to talk about with my really good friend uh, Kevin, who was actually on. Um, he was also in the same school with us. He was my best friend. I mean, he still is. He sounds but, familiar. Uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, it sounds like a familiar name. I may or may not know him. Yeah, maybe. Uh, he was on the podcast before, okay. in previous yeah. many many episodes before. Um, and uh, and one of the th- things that we usually talk about is at least the thing that he always says is about having like the you give yourself time to just sit down and just think, right? Uh, just sit down and just yeah. you know settle down with your thoughts. Because essentially, like like I said, we're polluting ourselves with so much information. Uh, in this day and age, at least in the digital age, we're, we're doing so much right. work that it's quite hard to, right. uh, you know, contextualize things, to put things into perspective. It's quite hard to do that. Right. Uh, and, and to gain that sense of, uh, of composure, of closure, yeah. right? Uh, you need to, like, like you mentioned, I, you, you put it really well, very eloquently said, uh, you know, just giving, closing your eyes and just, you know, taking a breather once in a while. That That sense of meditation is something that, I, I truly am a, a, a believer in. Right. Actually, funnily enough, uh, for one of my uh, my projects in, in university right. that I did this semester, uh, we we had to write this um, this thing called an op-ed, which is like uh, okay, just like yeah, you did write like a like an opinion article essentially, right? An opinion piece. Like and you, so you what I ones did, you find in newspapers, like that kind of an article. Uh, yes, uh, yes, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these kind of articles are essentially like an opinionated article, right? Right. So you write about something that you are strongly believing in. It tends to be biased, but at the same time, once you finish reading them, Very you much. have like a sense of, oh, okay, wait, that's an interesting perspective, right? You'll have that that thought. And so that's that's what you want. So what I wrote right. about was this concept of, you know how in hospitals, hmm. uh, we, we talk about patients and we talk about th- how they're feeling. We're looking at f- like physical recovery, right? Looking at the, yeah. the medical tech. Uh, but something that a lot of people neglect, not just in hospitals, but generally in life is the mental aspects of, yeah. uh, of recovery. Yeah, that's true. And so I was thinking like, uh, well, I mean, just think about it. If you're, let's say 
you or someone you know is is getting an operation or a surgery, right? While they're inside, they're, I mean, they have an anesthetic uh, anesthesia in their system. They're asleep. They don't know what's going on. But think about the family members outside, their friends who are in agony. You know, they're worried. And so what can they do? What can they resonate to in, in those moments of, of stress, of, of concern? And so that's when I thought about this idea of, oh, why, why don't they have like a room where you can, we can meditate, where you can, you can pray, right? It's not restricted to a religion, right. but of it's course. restricted to the conformity of, of having hope. hope because that idea of hope. Yeah, it's very interesting, Arjun. I think you should have a look at this. Uh, I'll send you these articles you that I was doing. Yeah, for yeah. I'd, I'd love yeah, to yeah. read, bro. Um, so it's yeah. very interesting, the concept. Yeah. Actually, apparently, there's a correlation between uh, the amount of hope you have okay. and uh, the physical uh, recovery as well. Wow. Yeah. Dude, so they did this test. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so they did this test with these uh, CRC, which is colorectal cancer, one of the most common types of cancers. Yeah, it's right? heartbreaking, man. It, it, it really is. And uh, I mean, there's nothing much that can be said on, on it itself. But in terms of recovery, these two uh, individuals, they, they did like a, a research on these people who were, were having colorectal cancer over 12 months. And they found out that by giving them a sense of hope, you actually give them a, a higher chance of recovery or a speedier recovery uh, compared to those who didn't have that. Right. And it's, it's such an interesting concept that that, uh, that I was looking at because it really right. goes forward into what you're mentioning about, you know, meditating, you know, keeping yourself calm, uh, giving, your sons, uh, giving yourself a sense of aspiration or purpose. It's, uh, it's very, very nice. Right. Bro, that's a wonderful yeah. point you bring up. I think uh, this thing about hope leading to increased rates of survival amongst these cancer mm. patients or people who are having particular illnesses or other com- comorbidities I think it's a wonderful point you bring up because I feel like there's this narrative in our society that science and spirituality cannot exist. And I love Ah, what you said about how it doesn't have to be confined to a religion because Mm. I think religion, unfortunately, I I think religions were originally meant to unite us. But now, unfortunately, religion has become such a divisive topic. So I think it's more of like a common belief in just a higher power. You know, it's a belief in the universe. It's a belief in that there is something above that's protecting you. You know, it could Mm. be the stars, it could be destiny, it could be whatever. But it is that, you know, something beyond us. It's a supernatural Mm. energy that is protecting us. And I think we we are energy at the end of the day, right? Yeah. I think healing can be brought about through these things. And I, I feel it's time modern science starts appreciating these things. Obviously, medicine does have its place, you know. Hmm. Western medicine especially has saved many lives. So I'm not bashing med- Western medicine for a second year. If I needed a surgery, my friend, the first thing I'll be doing is calling the best Western doctor I can find. <laughs> yeah, right? probably. <laughs> right? But um, yeah, the yeah, point yeah. is, we ca- we should also take advantage of these ancient practices which have been a- around hmm. for centuries. You know, praying and all these things have been around for centuries, way before the advan- advent of medicines. So I think hope is a strategy Um, and adding on to what you said about these cancer patients, there was also a study on Holocaust survivors. So Mm -hmm. in the Holocaust, there was this uh, study which found that the soldiers or people who were just a part of the Holocaust in general were more likely to survive if they believed they would make it out alive and thrive afterwards. And uh, do you know Dr. Gabor Mate? He's a Holocaust survivor. Um, I think I've probably seen an interview or two. You must have come across him. He's he's wonderful. Uh, So he talks a lot about this concept. Uh, As you know, he was um, just an infant actually when he survived the Holocaust, and he was separated from his parents um, for the first six to eleven months or so of his life. So he was talking about how that had a pretty traumatic effect on him as a child. And it took him a lot of years to uh, heal from that. Hmm. So I found that pretty interesting as well. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is an interesting, uh, you know, concept to, to talk about because uh, we have a lot of these people with different experiences, different... Um, exactly. Uh, the way they perceive things. I mean, right. at the end of the day, right, I feel like, I mean, the reason why stuff like these podcasts work yeah. is because, you know, the reasons why books exist, the reason why any form of literacy exists is because mm. we can only learn from others. We can learn from their perspectives. The reason why we read a lot of biographies and, and stories of people is because we want to learn from their mistakes right. and uh, and try replicate their successes. 
right Ooh, that's what yes. we're trying to do exactly yeah. bro it's not yeah. it shouldn't be the other way around you shouldn't be replicating the failures and um <laughs> yes you know, going the opposite way in terms of the successes because it's like when you're reading a book bro you're you don't have to make those mistakes yourself like let's say a mm. guy lives for 80 years he learns a lot of lessons and he decides to share it all with you bro you you you're literally getting free 80 years of experience that you can download into uh-huh. your head in 7 yeah. days just 7 days yeah for sure or you know however long you take to read a book i say 7 days because um i usually aim to read a book a week but i mean there's no hurry to read books it's more important um uh, to understand what the book is trying to say and it's not just about finishing books for the sake of finishing books which now i, I, I think completely a lot of agree doing that unfortunately yeah i i completely agree on this and uh, you know this might divert the topic a bit but no, no, i okay. it brings me to this concept of you know of the education system as a whole right right um i feel like especially now that i mean we're in university and i'm looking at the way that we're learning it's not even learning <laughs> you know what i mean bro it's ratta mugging yeah. have you seen three idiots it's, yeah i have I mugging and all that kind of they're trying to make everyone chaturs yeah they are and uh <laughs> it's it, it completely goes against at least for me personally right i am someone who who is if i want to do something or learn something i actually want to understand it yeah, right you know what exactly. i mean exactly i will i will question the existence but you know, we're we're in 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 a point of time in in society where that is not like it's not expected for you to do that it's like bro it's just the way it is right don't question don't question it <laughs> oh my it's just God. just do it and just don't question it you know and that kind of bothers me a bit it does. and uh, it's the same thing with books uh when i read books i try to take my, i i do the same thing as you i try read a book a week i haven't been right. successful with that but if i do yeah. take a book i will finish it within a week that's because, wonderful uh, Yeah it and and it's also not about how fast you uh read a book it's right. kind of like when you're in a gym it doesn't matter you, how much you it's not about how much, much you lift. bench yeah it's about how you know the form how much you how well you're doing it how often how many reps you know that that's the kind of consistency uh, consistency is key and it's the same with with mental consistency you know you're looking at right. reading books and all it's it's very similar um it's about understanding what you're learning or else what's the point right it's just like people talking to you just want come in one ear and go the other right there's no pro- there's no purpose in that um exactly and that's definitely definitely what i uh, you know i picked up on 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 reading yeah no no that's that's great man i think it's funny you mentioned the thing about uh, going to the gym i was uh, just in the gym this morning and uh, my cousins at the same uni as me so i bumped into him there and he was also saying arjun form and consistency is way more important than the amount of weight you're lifting he keeps saying that to mm. me that's his only advice for me in the gym because he yeah. knows that like my technique and stuff is fine but he's like just don't do ego lifting so i think the same yes. is true with books i've yeah, seen yeah, way yeah. too many people my friend go into the gym do ego lifting and then they get really bad injuries which you know puts them out for 1 2 3 4 5 6 months sometimes even a couple a couple of years so i'm just like what's the point of that man just for one second of ego what's the point of ruining your body yeah i mean i think it goes back to the idea of why you're doing it right most people i mean most guys our age if they're in a gym is for two reasons one they're actually wanting to work on themselves right. or two they just went through a really bad breakup <laughs> Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so he's just it, telling me he had a breakup just recently and that's why he's doubling down on gym time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean good. I mean, uh, the thing is yeah. you need motivation, right? You and motivation. that kind of motivation works most of the time. But um uh, it, it goes back to why you're doing it, right? Right, It's, right. And it has to be it has to be for yourself. It has to be. Um one thing that I've learned in recent, I mean, from February onwards, I had a a huge change of um of of mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went through this experience and I and it's the first time I went through it. I don't want to delve too much into the specificity uh, specificity on it, but essentially it it kind of altered the way I looked at myself. And I wanted to take a bit of control over over my life, right? Right. Because I realized that it was a bit, you know, disem, you know, what is the word I'm looking for? It was a bit yes. Yeah, that's is precisely it. And so I I realized, you know, this is an opportunity for me. to to gain back the the sense of control and so you know physically as well and mentally as well i started going to a to a more calmer place 
I started to realize, you know, just find myself in a sense. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. Yeah, cue in a montage of a guy, you know, walking in the mountains, you know, swimming and all that. <laughs> it's about <laughs> it's about exploring yourself, and uh, and yeah, I, I found uh, that at the end of the day, you're doing these things for yourself because right. who are you to impress? Who are you impressing? You know, if not yourself, you should be satisfied with yourself. Yeah, be composed and calm. Uh, and it brings me back to the original topic that we were talking about when we decided to make the podcast, right? Right. About, you know, the paths that we've been taking. Right. Uh, the kind of journeys that we take. Right. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, if you think about it, right, you start somewhere off and you end at the same place. Everyone is born and everyone dies. Right. Yeah. It's about what happens in the middle. Yeah. It's it's about what happens in the middle that, that, that really um, decides, is the deciding factor of, who you are and what is exactly. your legacy and so exactly. i i truly believe that it's in your hands right you get to decide yeah i love that so adrian um i uh, do you know prince ea prince ea uh the youtuber Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, he makes these uh these, these yeah motivational videos great. and all, right? Yeah, like he makes a lot of spoken word stuff. Uh, yeah. So I really love yeah. it, and you know he integrates some rap into that as well. So I'm a huge fan of yeah. it. Yeah. But in one of his videos, he said something which is exactly what you're saying. He was saying, "So we're born. That's D. We die. Mm. That's D." And he said, "Life is the C, and C is choice. Life is the sum ah. of the choices we make." That's what I uh, grasped from that video. Because, uh, Adrian, I feel like in in life, we have choices all the time. Every single day, we have a choice. You know, uh, take something as basic as going to the gym. You get to decide whether you move your body today or you don't. You get to decide whether you put some healthy food in your body or you put junk. You mm -hmm. decide whether you hang out with toxic people mm -hmm. or you hang out with people that uplift you and who inspire you to reach for more and who inspire you to dream bigger. So you get to make choices in life. And that's why I feel like we have to take that accountability, that self-accountability and make choices which will benefit us. Because I believe, uh, Adrian, self-respect is the most important thing, more than anything else. Because what's yeah. the point of the whole world respecting you if you can't look yourself in the mirror and be like, man, I'm proud of myself. Yeah. That should be yeah, the goal. Yeah, for sure. You should be able to, you should be able to take your shirt off look yourself in the mirror and be like, man, I am proud of who I am. That's mm. all. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it comes to self-satisfaction. I know a lot exactly. of my friends, I, I know a lot of people who are, who are happy the way they are. Exactly. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's I mean, they might be, that. yeah, they might be a bit obese. They might be very skinny, but it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, if you are content with, with who you are. But uh, I mean, it's it's a bit more unfortunate when it's a situation where you're not happy with yourself, right? Exactly. But you don't have the motivation or you don't have the means to push yourself to make a change. And, uh, and you know, when, when that's the situation that I find people facing, I try to help them, try my best to, to get them to get there. But at the end of the day, one thing I found out that uh, Arjun is that yep. if they don't find the need to do it themselves... They won't do it. No matter what you do, they won't do it. Nayoga. Yeah. Yes, correct. Nayoga. <laughs> it, it's that's the way it is. I mean, if if they don't feel the need to do it themselves, it's not gonna happen. And uh and that's just that's just the way it is. And I I've learned this the hard way through uh I mean a lot of times with the relationships I've had with friends. Um it all goes down to self uh self discipline, you know, that that need of uh you know wanting to do it. You need to make that change. You need to make that move. And um, right. yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah, man, it's all, it all comes down to self-discipline, my friend. In a lot of my videos, I'm sure uh, you would have seen, I talk about yeah. how in order to make any change in your life or to achieve any goal, the desire has to come from within because that's how it's going to last. So I'll give you an example of my own weight loss journey. So I used to be a very fat kid till I was about 12. I was very overweight. But then what happened is I lost a tennis match and I was fed up. I was like, something has got to change. And I was like, I got to lose weight because I'm too slow on the tennis court. Mm. But then I had this motivation to just lose weight. I was like, I'll do whatever it takes. You know, I saw people like Novak Djokovic, Virat Kohli, LeBron James, mm. etc. And I was like, 
these guys literally give everything to be the best at their sport and i was like if they can do it so can i so i had that motivation coming f- from within my dad didn't say anything my mom didn't say anything it was me it was all it was all coming from within and the thing is i played sports all my life so it was my diet that was the issue and it was mm. difficult man giving up all the junk and processed food which i grew up on like you know chocolates pizzas ice creams burgers etc it was tough um, giving up on all that but bro it was necessary and i had that goal in mind that higher purpose to become a better tennis player and that's what kept me going yeah i mean it goes back to what i what i was saying before about yeah. the motivation right exactly. if you know what you want if you know the end goal you will do whatever it takes to get there and uh and that's what's important the the trick is in in, in the middle sorry the the tricky situation is when you start to lose that that sense of motivation in the middle which i found uh, myself to have but that just realized that you know it goes back to that concept of how badly do you really how want it how bad do you want it yeah. like you you've got yeah. to ask yourself that bro if you don't want it bad enough you won't get it because guess what there is somebody who wants it more than you yeah there's always exactly. somebody who wants it more than you so you've got to want it bro in this uh, book that i was reading um, i'm I'm not remembering which book it was. I'll let you know which book it was if I if sure, it, sure. I remember it. But there was basically this uh, quote which said if you want something as badly as you want oxygen, you're going to get it one way or the other because you're ah. going to be so committed to work so hard to get that. Wow, that's a good, that's a good quote. It gave that's me good. it gave me the chills, bro, when I read that. Yeah. Gave me the That is really good. Wow. Yeah, so it's it's not a it's not a matter of yeah. want. It's a, it's a matter of need. Yeah, if you need you it. You need it. You got to need yeah. it, bro. It's got to be a necessity. Yeah. It's not dude, it's not a choice. Like you 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 got to need this thing. It's like um let's see. Look, I'm a tennis fan as you, as you know. Um so yeah. I'll just use a tennis analogy here. Novak Djokovic is the best tennis player of all time in my view, but he's known since he was like a 5 year old boy that he wants to be the number one tennis player in the world and win the most grand slams and win wimbledon yeah but he's known that since he was 5 and he's like i'm going to do whatever it takes to win this it doesn't matter what challenges i face i'm going to win this i need it yeah even virat kohli just look at him sachin tendulkar look at any of the greats in any field yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's not just limited to athletes by the way it can be in literally any field even uh You know Will Smith he's not from an acting family for example but he had that thing that he has to become a premier hollywood actor and you know the rest is history but it's that thing of want needing it you got to need it you got yeah. you know you don't have a plan b none of these people had a plan b okay because i feel a plan b is a distraction from plan a because if you have a plan b adrian Sometimes what happens is in your mind it's just like ah if it doesn't work out who cares i have something to fall back uh, on but if all you yeah. have is a plan a bro you're doing two things you're running to the place you want to be and you're running away from what you don't want and that is a powerful combo you're running towards wow. the life you want and you're running away from a life you don't want that's well, yeah wow okay that's oh man you didn't really think on that one that was a you <laughs> Wow man that's that's a, that's a good way you 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 put it. Thank you brother. Because it's true. Yeah. It's true. It really is. If you give yourself if you don't give yourself an option hmm. for for an alternative you're telling yourself I'm going to get there no matter what. Yes. Because there's nothing else I can do. There's nothing else I can do. This is it. Yeah and that's insane. I mean it goes back to a lot of um a lot like you said a lot of the great the lot of the greats. The reason why they're great yeah. is because that's what they hone in on that's what they want that's what they did and they know that yeah, and 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 they that. did that they did what they say the issue is nowadays we're having a lot of people who who say one thing and do another oh right? my god so like, actions speak they, a lot answers. louder than words yeah and um i feel like i'm also in one of those perspectives where i used to be someone who used to say something and i wouldn't necessarily do it i would have tried but then i would have been like oh, okay yeah. i tried Yeah, it didn't work out. I, I you know, I just give up. But I realize <laughs> now like having a bit of a you know, speaking with a bit of what well, what is that word called? I can't think of it uh, in English. 
Which word? Ah, in hindsight. In hindsight. Hindsight, right, yeah. right. Yeah, speaking of, in, you know, in hindsight, I, I can tell you for a fact that um, having motivation to do something and even trying and failing, it's it's not wrong. But it doesn't trying mean that you should stop. Wrong. Yeah, but you, it doesn't mean you should stop, Never. right? Because there is no success without failure, yeah. right? And it goes back to me, and I love this character. I love Batman, okay? I'm a huge fan. Oh, man, same, same. I love yeah. Batman. And so there's this uh, uh, in in the uh, the film Batman Begins, right? right? Christopher Nolan, he great director, by the way. Oh yeah, um, for he, sure. There's there's a there's a line in in the film where Alfred, you know, the, the baby Bruce Wayne, when he was a kid, falls in the in the cave, mm-hmm. and then he and then he starts crying, and then Alfred goes up to him, and he's like, "Why are you crying? What's up?" And he's like, "Why do we fall, right?" So we and can he rise. Says, is so we can he... learn to pick ourselves back up. Right, that's what he says. Right. So we can learn to pick ourselves back up, right? Because if you don't fall down, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna you know get up. You're gonna stay falling, right? That's the concept that I that I really enjoyed, and I, and I completely it's agree with it. Man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you have to learn how to walk before you can run, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, oh, my baby my, steps. Dude, that's a wonderful concept you actually touched because I feel like. We're trying to jump directly to mastery because what happens is, uh, Adrian, on social media, we see experts all the time. So we're just like, you know, these people are so intelligent. These people are so good at this. They're so good at that. But what people don't see is that they mastered the basics first before becoming masters at whatever Uh they are, um, you know, masters at. It's like in Kung Fu, you have belts. You start at white Mm -hmm. belt, then you go to yellow belt, then green belt, then blue belt, so on and so forth until you finally get to black belt. And even within black belt, you have, you know, eight dance. That's a whole separate conversation. But my point is, you got to master the basics first. And don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 20 or anything like that. See, uh, yeah. I'll give you an example of my uh, content creation journey. So I started my content creation journey seriously not too long ago. Like I was posting on and off before, but I have started posting consistently for the last six, seven months. Hmm. Now, it can be very easy for me to compare myself to, you know, a Jay Shetty or a Beer Biceps or, you know, any of these uh, great guys. But then what I did is I looked at their first videos. Bro, their first videos were not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Hmm. They also started from somewhere and they just upskilled as time went on. And obviously with practice, you just get better and better. So, bro, you you don't compare yourself to others. You have to compare yourself to who you were yesterday. And if you're better than the person you were yesterday, I feel like that's more than enough. I think... It's that small progress that you're making. And that's why I'm a huge fan of tracking miniature miniature progress. You should ask yeah. yourself at the beginning of every day, what is one action I can take to bring me closer to the person I want to be? Just one thing. One small action, because that's very doable. As human beings, we don't like to have such big ambitious targets. But if it's just one thing, you can do it, man. Yeah. You know, for sure, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. That's what yeah, um, for real. Lao yeah, yeah, yeah. said. These are words to live by. For for sure, and I mean, uh, going back to what you mentioned about yeah. you know doing, uh, you know, comparing yourself to who you were yesterday. My mom, my mom always says this thing to me. Uh, right. She always says this. She says, "You are your own enemy." <laughs> is what she says. Oh my god! And uh, you, she, and your mom's right. She's right, but every time she tells me, it just I feel very uncomfortable. I'm like, <laughs> Why are you saying this? It's, I don't like that. Why are you saying that? No, but again, speaking in hindsight, again, I I, I get to that um, to that point where I agree with that a hundred and twenty percent, and that is exactly why I didn't like it every time she said it because it was completely true. Well, the person you wake up in the morning to, right? You wake up. The first thing you look at when you brush your teeth or whatever you're doing is yourself. I you hope look at your reflection. Brush, uh, guys, brush your teeth, please. I hope that's <laughs> what we do. <laughs> I mean, if, if you learn anything from this podcast, at least go brush and brush your teeth. Your teeth. People. Minimum. Don't scroll yeah. Insta Reels first thing in the morning, please. Yeah, yeah. Please. please. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's a very bad habit. That, uh, a lot of my... <laughs> we get. But for real, yes. Uh, when you see yourself in the mirror, you look at your own competition. You say to yourself, this is who I want to be right don't 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 compare yourself to someone someone else right because you are yourself you're an individual 
um, you have you're different. And I think there's a great thing that you mentioned, Arjun, just now about yeah. you know uh, comparing yourself because that yeah, you, who else can you compare yourself to? No one else right. but yourself, right? Um, and you know yourself the best. Exactly. So it's it's that sense of putting yourself in that place right. and uh, really really testing yourself and saying you know what yeah at the end of the day it goes back to what i said before you know mm. about making a change unless you want to change yourself mm. it's, it's not, not gonna, gonna happen, happen. Yeah. even if it does it and won't so, be long term man because external motivation it's like a it's like a what do you call it like a uh, candle it just mm. burns very quickly true 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 it is yeah 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 i mean you're only after a certain point will you feel uh, the need to do something because other people are saying it, right? Exactly. Um, and then you'll find excuses, find ways to you know, <laughs> find yourself not to do it. Um, but if it comes from within, if you find that need to go and achieve something, that yeah. I'm pretty sure that will get you to where you want to be. 100%. And, uh, and you are doing a great job of that. I'll tell you that. Thank you. A good Thank job you, so bro. far. I mean, I'm just trying yeah. to do my best. I'm trying to set the example. I... All, I uh, I want people to know this, man. Uh, I genuinely do practice what I preach. And if I'm not talking about something, it's because I don't currently practice it in my own life. Mm. But whatever I say on my channel, in my videos, on my stories, wherever you see me on social media, I practice every single thing that I preach because I'll be a hypocrite if I don't practice yeah. what I preach. So I'm just trying to set the example. And I, I just want to serve, you know? Guys, I genuinely care about you and I want what's best for you. Yes, I I might, you know, come across as harsh sometimes. But it's mm. just because I want you guys to succeed and I want you all to be happy. Yeah. I, I, no, no, I completely agree. That's for you guys. So I, I want to serve. I, I just want to serve, man. Like, that's my only goal. It's to serve and to make a positive impact on people's lives. You know, when someone comes up to me and is like, Arjun, you really had a positive impact on my life. Like, that that's the real juice of life, my friend. That is what mm. brings me the most joy. That's why I get out of bed and just love doing what I do. You know, sometimes it even brings tears to my eyes. So, it's... Yeah, like there's there's no better feeling than that man honestly yeah yeah i know i i know what you mean i mean they say happiness comes in many forms it does you say it doesn't necessarily have to be in a monetary way right no no it doesn't uh, but but for sure i mean let's go back to thousands of years ago right, right. we were just just came making making just making each other happy just through the bare existence of each other right exactly i mean helping each other aiding each other that that's that is the basic of humanity that yeah. i feel like sometimes we have lost that sense of humanity right don't you agree no no uh, i do man completely it's it's such a uh, such a shame it's, it's a such shame. a shame that it is that you know we've grown to be the most evolved being but at the same time... We're the most lonely. There's like a loneliness yeah. epidemic, bro, that's happening in our culture. We are. We're extremely lonely. And this is with technology. That's the sad part. Technology is supposed to make us connected. No, that's the whole selling point of mobile phones, of social media apps. That's the, that's the selling point. You know, that's the marketing tactic which these companies use. And guess what, bro? Like, even though they're supposed to connect us, we're more distant than ever. Mm. Um, you know, I, yeah. I, I'll tell you in my college, uh, I just, uh, was sitting at a cafe. I was getting some work done and I saw two people who were having a conversation through text. They were sitting like, um, you know, maybe five, 10 feet across from each other. And they're okay. still having a conversation with each other through their mobile phones because they don't know how to converse. That this is, this is a big, big issue nowadays, by the way. Because I feel like, especially in the workforce that we go into, um, not, not even in the workforce, even in school, I can just think of a lot of people that I've met who are just a bit younger than me. I'm not that old. I'm only like 22 yeah, this year. Yeah. Dude, but, age is a state but, of mind, Adrian. Don't worry. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> but uh, then again, it brings you into about how much you've been exposed to, right? Because it's all about right. experience. I'd rather use experience as a term rather than age. Because you exactly. can be very young and, exactly. and have a lot of exposure to stuff Facts. that someone who's 30 nice. might not have right so that's why i that's the first thing i started off with when i mentioned arjun about ageism right i i think it's completely wrong to have a it mindset is. built into our 
our, um, our our judicial system and our just a system in general the way we think uh but you know going back to my point having a sense of connectivity is just it's just not there at all right uh, you're so disconnected um i've lost my train of thought over there for a second but don't worry you, don't you know yeah that entire concept of just not knowing what to do not knowing what to say because you're just used to on your phone just texting you can't reciprocate that information out in the open it's just very very just unfortunate we can't talk anymore and actually i notice this personally as well sometimes uh it's easier to to say things through text but at the same time it just doesn't have the same effect right because you can say one thing over text but the person who's receiving it could just misinterpret that by like so much, so many uh, uh, miles. That's what so you could, what you said, is like not even what you meant, but somehow they managed to interpret it in a, in a way that uh, that was not intended. That causes a lot of miscommunication issues, and uh, most of the time, eighty uh, percent of the time, if you have issues, it's because of miscommunication. Um, and if only people just spoke, right, and just just cleared the air, <laughs> most problems would exactly. be fine. Bro, yeah. that's a wonderful po- that's a wonderful point you bring up about communication. I think communication is a lost art. Uh, thankfully, at my college, we do have communication courses where they're actually teaching you about like public speaking skills and you know because I'm doing business, uh, so I'm studying business management. So as you know, in business, people skills are very important, and I'm yeah. uh, you know half Punjabi, so that sort of built into our culture. It's just being a people's person and pleasing yeah. others that's something which is taught to us from a very young age so i think communication is a lost art which we have to rekindle in a way because we're not hmm. able to express ourselves because as you said through text a lot of things can get lost lost in translation you know someone means to say something but you know it comes across as something else if, if i'm saying something to you in person or you know we're having this conversation now as we're doing virtually you can understand what I'm trying to say and you also get to see my facial expressions and body language. Oh, for yeah? sure. And for the sure. same goes for you. I can see exactly what you're saying and I can see your body mm. language. So yeah. with that, you have an enhanced sense of understanding. But the thing is, if you're just texting someone all the time, you don't get that at all. So I think human connection is important, man. And I think COVID has proven this to me. It was so hard mm. to not see my friends in person for six plus months. It was very tough. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 it can be. Yeah. I mean, I agree. It's uh, it's something that, it you don't have to be extroverted or introverted to have this uh, have this feeling. I feel like it applies for most people because after a certain point, you just need that humane touch. I mean, think about uh, people who have been stranded in islands or um, who have been put in prisons for a long, long time with basically no human connection. You actually start to lose your mind. It's it's an interesting concept. Uh, Fact. I, I mean, I've read this. I've read this book, The Martian, right? Uh, it's, I, I mean, love it's, it's fiction. That book, bro. I love it. Yes, it's amazing. And uh, Andy Wire, he 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 writes in such a beautiful way that it's fiction, but it fe- it feels like he actually was stuck in Mars. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like he's yeah, he's been stuck it. and he came back. And um, it's that concept of of you know being lonely, of having no human connection, but really boiling down to the basic needs of of humanity right and i think uh it, it's it's something that we're really missing out on because everything is is digitized and we're all everything we need is is just there it's 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 online for us all, any information back then we used to ask um, all the uh, the old people right all the grandmothers and aunties uh in the village they would know everything what's going on they would be gossiping and oh just have to ask Lord. them what's going on. And they'd be like, oh, yes, yes. Did you know in that street? Oh, did you know in that house? <laughs> Bhai, right? This happens in India. Like the aunties are still gossiping in India. Yeah. It happens yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't, you, but the thing is, you can't find that elsewhere is what I'm saying. No, 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 you, it, you because don't. everyone is uh, is either so, find- so marginalized by, by, you know, the expectations of society now or they're just fully digitized now they just instead of speaking and telling you they upload a status on twitter <laughs> you know? oh my god bro <laughs> like this this stuff like i'm sorry but like it i, I don't like cussing but like it pisses me hmm. off bro yeah 
Yeah, I mean, it, it can get it, it can really get quite pisses me off. Unbearable. It um, I just think, bro. See, so I, I'm a social media creator myself, so I love social media platforms. But the catch is, they got to be used in the right way. Ah. The key is not only right, right way, way. Also, you have to um, keep a uh, oh my god, I, it's, what is the, what am I looking for? It's mm. you have to mediate the usage yes, of social media. Exactly, exactly. Just like anything in life, too much of something will kill you. Too much of oxygen will kill you. Too much of water will kill you. So why oh, aren't we applying? Yeah. So why aren't <laughs> we putting this uh, this this concept into our mm. use social of technology? Media. Especially social media, definitely. Yeah. It's it's a polluting it's a polluting thing, exactly. right? Uh, maybe you scroll five minutes over Instagram reels, makes you laugh. Okay, get back to work. But then five minutes ends up being fifty minutes, and you don't realize, oh, yeah. I've lost fifty it's minutes mindless, of my time. Bro. It's the way people scroll on social media, man, is mindless. Like I have a friend who basically he has an intention to just check his DM once, but then he ends up staying mm. on the app for like half an hour. So it's that sort of yeah. mismatch, right, between what you intend to do and what you actually do. So Jay Shetty has this brilliant thing which he talks about, where he says, like, after an hour of focused work, for example, you give him five minutes to just play around on social media. So that's like, do whatever you want, scroll. As that's what I do. You want. Yeah. Yeah. Even I do that. So I'm just like five minutes, just scroll as much as you want, go crazy, but then get back to work. So it's yes. like that's the best way to do it. I think that's the most sustainable, and that way you can actually enjoy your social media use. You don't have to feel guilty because then you're not just logging onto the app every two minutes trying to check your phone. You're setting times for it. I think time locking is an underrated tool. Yeah, it actually it actually is. People are underrated. assuming it's a parental control or something, but actually not at all, man. I I I okay. I haven't used it, but I have the sense of. I mean, I had an issue before, uh, quite some time back, and it also goes into you know the change. And I told you about when I you know got a realization and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I had a, a huge issue with social media. I mean, ironically, you'll see me online, but <laughs> now, no, no, but I, I love uh, your content, it's bro. it's yeah, thank you. But uh, many times you'll see that it's not about how often you're online. It's about the control that you have. If I take out yeah. my phone now. I, I have the control to put it down immediately. And I know that what I'm doing, I'll do man. it for a bit. And especially when doing work, uh, it's about, you know, doing your work and then giving yourself that reward for a bit. Because unfortunately, we are in this generation where our attention span is so low. It's just Less built than like into 20 us. 20 seconds, man. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it, it, it's really ridiculous. And I, I feel kind of well ho- helpless about it because i can't really do much of it it's ingrained into us right we grew up into this so uh it's not much we can do in terms of attention span you can't really fix it but what you can do is is mitigate that and is mediate it and that's exactly what you mentioned uh, an hour of work and five minutes of, of uh of phone usage for me it's 25 minutes of work and five minutes of usage and the reason why that works that's for me is because yeah. that 25 minutes i get to do the work very consistently and i do it very well because after that it just becomes like uh i just have to finish this uh you know you tend to lose that control at least personally for me yeah so that's pretty much what i've been experiencing i don't know about you how i mean you said an hour is what you do usually, yeah right? it's usually like an hour uh sometimes 90 minutes but it's it it doesn't have to be that amount of time uh, adrian but it has to be like a work block followed by some time to check social media so i'll allow myself yeah. that sort of time or uh, sometimes what i do is if i'm anyway recording a video like if i'm uh, recording a story or something then after the story i'll give myself a couple of minutes to just check my dms and all that other stuff mm. but i never use social media mindlessly like you know every time i'm on the app it's a conscious decision to go i don't impulsively go so i love what you're doing man about you know, working for X amount of minutes than taking time for social media. I think that's the way to use it sustainably. And that's the way for social media to be your servant and not your master. Because ah, wow. as, as a wise well man once said, technology is a wonderful servant, but it's a terrible master. So we've got to keep technology hmm. our servant. Because once you get into master territory, my friend, you're in a dangerous place. 
Oh yeah, for sure. And I think we're we're really nearing that place. And it's very funny if it's you look sad, at like man. movies like The Terminator and all that. It's fiction, but we're we're really getting close to that that you know that place. Uh, we're losing control, and uh, this is exactly what you mentioned. Um, you know, don't let it be your your master. You know, uh, make sure that you end up having that sense of control. And if you don't have that you are in a very dangerous territory and I, and I firmly believe that and I think most people and I'm an advocate for this as well I truly believe you should maintain control of, of technology use but at the same time it might be hypocritical at times because your life nowadays is so engraved into technology um, a lot of things that you need to do is you can only do it with technology you can't do it anywhere else right you want to contact someone Oh, it hit me up on my Instagram. I don't use WhatsApp much. Oh, it hit me up on Telegram. You know, you, you know what I mean? Hit it's me up on TikTok. <laughs> that one, I I don't know. Um, okay, let's not talk about yeah. TikTok, bro. I don't want the Chinese government to be watching this. <laughs> you don't want the CCP to. No, no, to no. We don't. We don't want this. that. Yeah, yeah. We have to be wary where yeah. of the CCP. The yeah. U.S. is doing something interesting. Yeah, with exactly. Right that. I, saw, I was the just motion. thinking about the bill uh, yeah. that they passed. President Biden has signed it, so it'll be interesting, bro. Because there are lots of uh, TikTok influencers. So what the hell is going to happen to them? I'm just. I don't know, and it's, and it's not just about influencers, right? A lot of businesses are relied on on TikTok, and it's it's a, it's a Chinese company. They're asking them to basically un-Chinese themselves, you know what I mean? <laughs> They're asking you to like reduce, get rid of your association with your own hometown, which um, I doubt it's going to happen. And I, and I, you know, it, it can get quite political though. And I, and I don't want to indulge into that. But in the sense that, you know, uh, they really are not letting them uh, slide with this. And uh, it's quite interesting to see what's going to happen because... For sure, wow. man. A lot of the the, the stuff that I mean, the U.S. economy is is unfortunately it's relied unfortunate on the influence of TikTok. Um, yeah, so quite excited to see what's going to happen there. Um, but yeah, I mean, wow, full circle. We we came an entire way uh, over this conversation wow. here, um, and I think, and I think it's about time we. Um, you know, came to a consensus or come to a conclusion about uh, the concepts that we have mentioned today. And I think we sure, should go sure. back to uh, what we mentioned about having pathways in life. Yes. Right. Um, I, when you say this to me, I'm, I'm kind of religious, right? I mean, who, who, I mean, a lot of people are nowadays. A lot of people I, aren't. I, I, I'm, a, I'm also religious. I, I think we're both yeah. religious people, uh, though it's something yeah, we are. I don't really talk much about on social media. Yes. For the true. simple reason that I don't want to cause any ruckus or divide or mm. any of that. But I, I am also like yourself, a religious person. Yeah. So Arjun, the, the, the thing is between uh, two religious people who are of different religions. Yeah. Uh, it. To me, it doesn't matter whether you believe in a God or even if you do uh, right. what God you believe in. Right. Because as you mentioned, and I think you put it very eloquently well, it's about the uniform belief of, of a higher being. A higher at the power. End of the day. A higher power. That, that's, that's essentially it, like an ostensible. You want someone out there that has full authority over you and in the sense of... It, basically, you know how science can explain uh, what, uh, how... Right. But they can't explain why, <laughs> you know, and that's kind of that's kind of what uh, religion tries to fill the gaps in, in there. And one of the things I believe um, and, I, and I believe this truly is things happen for a reason. Right? Everything, Everything happens, happens for, for a reason. Yeah. And I, I, I thoroughly I definitely believe that. And uh, I also believe that we are put in a path. Right. We're all given a path. It's about how you find yourself in that path at the end of the day. It's about how you bring yourself onto um, those experiences and the people that you meet, the relationships you make, the legacy you pass down. Um, this is what I think, you know, corresponds to a life in general. What, what do you think? What's your perspective on right. that? Oh, man, that's that's a wonderful question, man. I I. I pride myself on being an open-minded individual and changing my mind mm. on things. And I've changed my mind on so many things over the years, like, uh, you know, diet, health, 
spirituality. Yeah. I've begun to embrace paradoxes in my life, uh, such as the integration of science and spirituality. But one thing which I'll not change my mind on is that everything in life happens for a reason. I genuinely Wonderful. believe in that, bro. Because, mm. you know, it's like uh, it's like Steve Jobs said, you can't connect the dots looking forward, but you can connect the dots looking backwards. And mm. that's a belief which I fundamentally believe in. So that's why think in terms of hindsight now, okay? Know that when you look back on this event a year later, you're going to understand that things had to happen exactly the way they happened. I think... As we mentioned at the beginning, every road you take in life has a purpose. You know, even the people you meet in your life, you don't meet people by accident. Rumi said you meet people for a reason, a season, or a lifetime, mm -hmm. right? So you have to identify whether the person in your life is there for a reason, a season, or a lifetime, and act accordingly. And also, I think sometimes things happen in your life to teach you a lesson, and it's on you to take the lesson, what I also feel is that if you don't learn the lesson, it'll just get, um, like, you know, you'll just keep suffering again and again and again. I'll give you an example, bro. Like, I'm sure all my bros can relate to this. And I'm generally saying this as a bro, from a bro to another bro, to all yeah. the bros that are listening. To all this, the bros. All the bros out there that are yeah. listening to this conversation. I have also gone through rejections for by girls okay i've yeah. been ghosted you know girls have not refused to see me for who i am mm -hmm. they've um you know so not made fun of my imperfections but they've not sort of embraced those parts of me yeah but i wouldn't change a thing i'm so happy that all those rejections happened because you know i wouldn't be at the place i am in life if these things happen the way I wanted them to happen, you know, earlier, I think after we've discussed this over text, yeah, I had zero Riz before, bro. Like, <laughs> I couldn't talk to girls, like, at all. Even till last year, striking up a conversation with a girl was like a nightmare for me, but now it's the easiest thing ever. In fact, mm. today, um, I was basically, so there's this book, uh, it's called Same as Ever by Morgan Housel. It's a personal fan. Oh, yes. It's good. It, it's good, right? Yeah. 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 It's wonderful. I happen to have an extra copy of the book. It's brand new. So I was trying to sell it to people at my college. I was okay. literally cold selling to guys and girls. Like, you know, okay. people just cold call or cold email. I was literally yeah. just going up to random people and being like, hey, I'm selling this book. You want to buy it? And yeah. So, you know, so my point is... Dude, these things happen for a reason. I used to be terrified of public speaking. If you asked me to do an interview like this a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, I would have been like, no, I can't do it, man. Like, uh, mm. it's too scary. But yeah. now, like, there's nothing I'd rather be doing than this. This is, like, my yeah, favorite great. thing to do in the world. So, dude, everything in life happens for a reason. I think in life, there are no regrets, only lessons. But you got to take the lesson. It's on you to take the lesson. Kyuki, um, yeah. so in Hindi, there's this uh, saying, my, my grandpa keeps telling me this. He's like, Arjun, jobi life mein hota hai, wo achche ke liye hota hai. which means whatever happens in life, it's for the best. And he said mm. that you may not understand it in the moment, but he says that after a few years, maybe a few months or whatever the time horizon is, you will understand why it had to happen exactly the way it did. And you'll be thankful to God. So as I said, mm. with the rejections with the girls, for example, I'm so thankful all these girls rejected me, man. Or I'm so thankful that some of these girls ghosted me. Yeah. I'm no, so no, no. I completely I'm, agree. I'm so yeah. thankful that it's happened, man. It's like God was protecting me from something that wasn't meant for me. Hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing. The thing is, you'll never know until, until you know. You know what I mean? And there are certain things in life that I truly believe you will know, right? right. When it happens. And uh, um, that's that's the kind of stuff that you know, the way you you mentioned. Don't look at it in terms of, uh, don't think about stuff in hindsight before. You know, think about it now, right? You know, put yourself in that position now. I completely agree with you, and I think that brings forward uh, a really important point about the concept of 
you know, especially what your grandfather said, seems to be a very wise man. Um, oh, he is. Definitely. We, we got to yeah. get him on the podcast sometime. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, that, that would be interesting. Three person and I, podcast. I, yeah. Actually, yeah. I mean, even in these podcasts, this is why I like to do this, Arjun. This is exactly why. Right. Because I, I think everyone, right, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be someone who has, uh, you know, a lot of education or a lot of exposure. Not at all. This. Just the simplest person that you can find. Anyone has so right. much to offer, but they haven't been given a platform right, to right. do so. And that's essentially what I want to achieve with this podcast. And that's amazing. If I have to be honest, I think it's quite successful. And uh, and and I'm I'm looking forward to doing more of these. Right. And uh, and for sure, I would love to have you come back another time and with another person as well. We could, I mean, the, the more the oh, merrier, yeah, right? Oh my God, we yeah. gotta do, dude. We gotta do a part two and a part three. You know, when I start my podcast, I'm definitely yeah. gonna have you on multiple times, dude. Because Without a doubt. see, even though we've not had too many of these kind of conversations, bro, you're you're also someone. Um, who I can talk to so easily and about so many different topics. You know, we've covered mm. so much ground today. Yeah, of course. Um, you're a very deep guy, bro. You're very open-minded. So, dude, I, I would love to have a lot more conversations with you. I really enjoyed this. I I feel so full of energy. You know, when I have... Con- there's, some, there's some people you hang out with, Adrian, who... You just feel drained, you know? It's like they just Uh, totally suck out the energy from you. It's like they're sucking your life energy away. At my college, there were a few of these kind of kids, so I just distanced myself from them completely Mm. because they were just ruining my mood, man. And, you know, they were just Uh, like... I can understand. And they're like dream stealers also. Like when they would overhear me talking about my dreams, uh, you know, they'd be like, ah, that's not possible. You're unreasonable. Mm. Be realistic. So I'm, I just distance myself from them. Dude, it might be impossible from them, for them, but it's not impossible for me. But that being said, uh, bro, when I have these kind of conversations, when I had this conversation with you today, I just feel so full of energy. I feel so much optimism. I just feel amazing, man. I, I, I know that there's still some amazing people in this world like yourself. So yeah. keep being you, brother. Keep doing Thank you, man. For sure. Keep doing the amazing work you're doing. Um, I know the podcast is called Masala Chai. I'm sadly yeah. not a Masala Chai fan. A chai fan. Yeah, I'm not really <laughs> a chai. Caffeine in general. I've never been much of okay. a caffeine person in general. I don't know for what reason. Um, but as you guys saw earlier in the show, uh, I was just sipping on a strawberry smoothie. Oh, nice. So just, um, Healthy. all, it was just, um, some fruits, um, dry fruits and some almond milk. That's, that's mm. about it. Tastes delicious. But yeah, I like, I like that, um, you're doing amazing work through the podcast nonetheless. And honestly, if I like masala chai, I would definitely have been sipping on some, uh, during this <laughs> yes, conversation it's just i mean the the way that the name came forward is just um that the conversation is not like it's not supposed to be forced right it's just imagine you sitting down at like a local tea stall just talking with your friends you know you sometimes you sit down with your friends you know you have these kind of conversations that you'll you'll not expect usually so that's where i got this name from and i'm a huge right. fan of, of, of masala chai myself and so uh, that's why it was natural for me to name it this way uh but but yeah and and i mean arjun you know thank you for you know for for being here today uh, i'm really really happy i really enjoyed it bro like thank you so much for having me uh i'd be likewise i would i would love to do this again many more times i know sure, m- sure. many more conversations in the works and we have dude um i know this we're connecting like properly on camera um with cameras on and we're being recorded but we've definitely got to have uh, some offline conversations as well. For like, sure. Of course. Uh, it's been yeah, a while yeah, yeah. since I've been in Singapore, man. So I'm... Hey, I, I just come on down. No, no. Then I'm we can coming, definitely I'm have... I'm coming. Uh, I got to come to Singapore soon. I've also got some family in Singapore. So nice. it's, been, it's okay. been a long time since I've been there. So definitely a trip to Singapore is long overdue from my side. So I'll be making that happen very, very soon and uh Good. bro we've got we got a lot of we got a lot of epic shit to do <laughs> yes i love the way you put it yeah i listen my doors are always open hit me up whenever you're here anytime we'll have fun. and if yeah. you're ever in delhi or something you also let me know sure sure we'll do bro we'll um do. and yeah i i just one more thing i wanted to add i i will do my best to vote as well 
Ah, uh, yes, I, yes. I, I'll do no, go ahead. I mean, do your best. I, I, I do think uh, the sense of voting, right? Um, the thing with voting, people assume that, oh, my one vote is not going to make a difference, right? But it's completely incorrect. You know, uh, in the US, the vote for uh, English against German as the national language was, was won by one vote. And, uh, and in Punjab in uh, 2008, Right. Uh, the election was was won by one vote. Really? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Two thousand eight. So I I feel like all these things that that people are having this misconception about voting is the one day people have power. You know, there's only a period of time where people, the actual people, have power is voting day. That's the one day you have a choice to make, and that is when you can do what you always wanted to do, which is you know have a sense of I make. I, I made it. I made a decision. You know, I made a difference. Right. Uh, and and it's very important. Uh, whether or not you have good options is another thing. <laughs> we yeah. shouldn't delve into that. But um, we we won't be discussing yeah. who we're voting for. I think that's all. Oh, of course not. But yeah. it's just the act of voting. So as you said, it was won by a single vote. So that just shows the power of a vote. So I think yeah. if you can vote, why not? I mean. It, yeah, of course. It, it costs nothing, but honestly, it could shape the country for better or for worse. So it I could. think, so it I think, could. um, dude, just I, I think you just gotta do it. It's like, just, just do it, man. Um, yeah, for sure. Really and I completely agree with it. Yeah, you really have to. It really makes a difference. It, it if you're watching this, if you're watching this, you, you're, you're of legal age. If you're if of legal age, guys, election in your country, do vote. Go vote. Do vote. <laughs> But the most important yeah. thing we, uh, Adrian and I want you to take away from this podcast is brush your teeth first thing in the morning. <laughs> and do not look at Insta Reels yes. first thing in the morning. Yes. So those Try are the most important things we want you to take away from this. I hope you took away some other uh, insights. And uh, Adrian, um, hopefully people do share with us what they took away from this episode because i know of course it's going to be a very insightful one i know people will find it useful uh, but yeah without a doubt i mean i know i i, I do get a lot of messages and i think right. i told you this but uh, okay. this this podcast it was i was quite shocked to see it but it was 17th on the self-help oh, yeah, in yeah, singapore you told me, uh, yeah it's well and deserved bro like very well deserved yeah, and so I, I was, thank you, uh, but I was I was very shocked because, you know, it really just goes to show how people are taking um, they take know, a this lot of... They take this shit seriously, man. Yeah, they do. And uh, the culture of listening to podcasts is becoming very prominent it now, is. especially in, in this day and age. And so, I mean, firstly, if you're listening this far, thank you so much for being here with me and Arjun Gupta today. Uh, we've had a blast talking, um, having did. a normal conversation. This is not scripted as well. This is completely oh, yeah, We didn't script it, man. Natural. Like normally, yeah. guys, uh, I'm like a huge proponent of research and scripting, not scripting, but uh, preparation. But, you know, with some people and Adrian and we being one of them, he's so easy to talk to and we can cover so much ground. I felt like we should just go with the flow today and that's exactly what we did. So, um, we both yeah. hope that you like this and it added some value to your life. You know, I hope just the power of one guys, if you just took away one positive thing from this interview, um, we're very happy. Yeah, for sure. I completely agree with you. Yes, exactly what Arjun said. Right. Just take one thing guys, just take one, one thing. One thing that you learn from this this podcast that you can apply in your life, and that would make us very happy. The both of us, it would it would definitely, uh, you know, an action speaks louder than words. So go ahead and and make your life better by by whatever you learned from today. Um, and with that being said, thank you so much for joining us today. After a while, after a long time. Uh, episode of podcast and Arjun I'm happy that you were the guy to bring it back into, into oh, fruition oh man it was my pleasure yeah. I had a blast I, I had a yeah. blast wonderful amazing that's great man brother I, wonderful it was, indeed. it's a joy talking to you as always um, yeah and yeah now I know bro we gotta do a lot more of this going forward yeah we, we, we definitely do man um, yeah and so with that, with that, without further ado, I think we we say goodbye to our, our listeners. Uh, yep. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Take Bye. care. As always, stay yeah. safe. Stay have a, have a nice cup of masala chai. If not, yeah. strawberry sh- strawberry milk. Uh, strawberry, what should you have? Strawberry, strawberry smoothie. Strawberry, strawberry smoothie. Strawberry yes. Smoothie, guys. Have a strawberry or smoothie. Have masala chai. Uh, your call. Or masala chai. <laughs> Up to you. <laughs> or just prefer water. I prefer masala chai. Yeah, or yeah. water. Yeah. I mean, water is important. I'm a water here. You gotta get gotta get hydrated. Gotta but, get yeah. hydrated, people. I mean. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. But go for masala chai. If you can, go for masala chai. Yes. If you guys know, I've made TikToks on how to make them. So go yeah, watch that. Yeah, yeah. Guys, by the way, do follow Adrian on TikTok. Um, I've seen some of your TikToks on uh, Instagram. That, you know, you mm. posted as reels, I think. I've seen a few of those, so I I I like that. So guys, make make sure to watch uh, Adrian stuff on TikTok. Yeah, for sure. And your your YouTube, um, everything will be linked in the in the description below. All right, thank uh, you. Make sure so to much. follow. Make sure to follow Arjun on Instagram. If you're watching this on, on YouTube, you. go ahead and follow him and, and subscribe to him. If you're listening to this on Spotify, again, all that information will be on uh, on YouTube. So go ahead and do that. Thank um, you. So much. And, and and yeah. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it. I have nothing else for me to say. I'm content with today. I'm happy with what we yeah. discussed. And I can bye, say, bye, I bye. can tell you the same. Yeah. And so, anyways, goodbye, guys. Stay safe. Peace Stay out. safe, guys. Namaste. Namaste.